So what does love mean? Think about it for a moment. What does that word actually mean to you? Regardless of the 171,476 words in the Oxford English Dictionary that are currently in use today, there are still, there is still a limit to our language. I love mashed potatoes. I love my friends. I love my family. I love watching movies. I love cooking and traveling and reading. I love going to church and worshiping God. I love being at the beach or on a lake or in the mountains. I love driving a car. I love the colors red and green. I love my pets. <laughs> the meaning of the word love in all of those sentences is so very different. In English, we have one word for love. But in Greek, there are four. Philio, storge, eros, and agape. Only two of them are used that often in scripture, philio and agape. But all four of them mean very different things. The first one, philio, is the type of love that we have for friends. It is the mutual affection that grows between two people that have a common bond. Aristotle would say that this type of love requires reciprocity, a give. <laughs> I hate that word. Reciprocity, a give and take in a relationship where each mutually benefits from the bond that is created. This type of love just happens naturally as those common bonds between people are shared. The second one, storge, is the type of love that we share between family members. This love is similar to filial love, but is reserved for the more intimate relationship that develops between parent and child or between siblings. The third word for love in Greek is eros. This word is the kind of love that is shared between lovers. It is the romantic or passionate form of love. It's often the kind of love that can grow out of a filial relationship between two people. Or it can be sparked from the moment two people lay eyes on one another. The last word for love in Greek is agape. And this type of love is referred to as the highest form of love. It is love that God has for us and that we ought to have for our Creator. Years ago, the definition for agape love would have included charity in its definition, but unfortunately, the word charity has come to only mean giving away money or things to someone in need. But the original concept of charity, and therefore this agape love, is that it is unconcerned with the self and only concerned with the greatest good for the other. Agape love is not born just out of emotions or feelings or familiarity or attraction, but instead from the will as a choice. It requires faithfulness, commitment, and sacrifice without expecting anything in return. So the biggest difference between agape love and all the other words for love is that there is no expectation for reciprocity. There, I said it. Reciprocity. As we read this passage from Romans, the word for love used in this is agape, meaning that we are commanded to love others without expecting anything in return. It requires faithfulness to our neighbor. It requires commitment and sometimes even sacrifice for the well-being of others. It is the only type of love that can be commanded of us. All the other forms of love either grow naturally because of the bonds that are shared, such as friendships that develop as filial love or eros love if they develop into a romantic type of relationship, 
or they exist due to family relationships or bonds, not necessarily, not necessarily of our own choosing, such as, such as storge love. One might point out that the Ten Commandments say that we are commanded to love our father and mother, but this is incorrect. We are commanded to honor our fathers and mothers. Because the only type of love that can be commanded is agape love. In our reading today from Romans, the word for love used, as I said, is agape, which tells us that as Christians, we are therefore commanded to show empathy and loving kindness to everyone. We are commanded to show the kind of love that God has for us to our neighbor. Origen wrote that love is the one obligation that fulfills all other obligations. And that's exactly what the author of Romans is saying here. Agape love for everyone is the fulfilling of the law. You can't be doing anything wrong if you are fulfilling this one commandment. If you think loving one another, though, is an easy commandment, think again. The biggest difficulty with this is that we are far too self-absorbed and far too self-focused to sacrificially care for all others. We have our limits. We can only go so far. We can only love so much. There's another big difference between agape love and all the other forms of love. As I already mentioned, the other forms expect something in return. They are reciprocal in relationship. I get something out of it, you get something out of it. Agape love is also a shared love, but what happens with agape love is that it grows exponentially. It's not just between two people, it grows between lots of people as more and more, more people share that kind of love. Did you ever notice that during Christ's ministry on earth, he never did anything alone? The only thing he ever did alone was to go off to a desert place or to a garden to pray. Everything else he did was with a group of others. He personified that agape love by bringing people together to learn, to work, to do miracles, to teach, to care for others. And if we go through the scriptures, we can see just how that agape love grew. First, it was just the twelve that Jesus called. Then it included some others, an outer circle, if you will, wives and mothers of those disciples, and people like Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Then in Acts, as the Christian movement grew, it included, it, it included those that added to their number every day, even into the thousands. Today, as Christianity has spread throughout the world, it has included billions of people since Christ's death. It is because of that sacrificial agape love. We need to agape one another. As Christ has agape not really a Greek word, but okay. As Christ has agape us. One of the things that I have always loved about smaller membership churches is, you know, we have the quirky uncle. We have the wayward cousin. We have the Marys and the Marthas, the mother-daughter disputes. We have the prodigal son and the older son who has been here forever feeling neglected. We have the black sheep of the family, and we have the Josephs, the drama queens who need center attention. Now, I don't care if you identified with any of those particular characters, or thought of names for those characters, or think that none of them actually exist here. What matter is that regardless, we love one another. 
We know how to accept one another with all of our character flaws and our character strengths. That is the power of agape love. Because there are lots of those kinds of people out in the world. And the more we share agape love, the more all of those characters feel included, cared for, and loved themselves. After all, after all, we are the body of Christ. Our agape love for all of our neighbors is the greatest gift that we can give to the church and even to the world right now. There's this thing that happens with agape love. If you are the receiver of it, you feel empowered, strengthened, changed to become a better human being. And when you are the giver of agape love, you have more love to give. You are also strengthened and empowered, and you become a better human being. Josh Groban wrote a song called You Raise Me Up. When I am down, and oh my soul so weary, when troubles come and my heart burdened be, then I am still, and wait here the silence until you come and sit a while with me. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. <clears throat> you raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up to more than I can be. There is no life, no life without its hunger, each restless heart beats so imperfectly. But when you come, I am filled with wonder. Sometimes I think I glimpse eternity. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up to more than I can be. <laughs> this song always leaves me breathless and touches my heart and my soul. And they are exactly the words that fill today's message with hope for tomorrow, because it is in loving one another that we raise each other up, and we are made stronger, whole, and a new creation. That kind of love for one another allows us all to stand on mountains, to walk on those stormy seas, filled with wonder 